destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days. Shall not live out half their days. You see people who are sinful and people who are wicked and what they sow, they reap. And because they sow wickedness and they sow evil, they reap the same. And it said they shall not live out half their days. You see, there are when some things happen and uh, you know people lose their lives, they say it's God's, uh, it's God's plan. That is how God wants it. They are not willing to examine themselves. What did they do? What should they have done? What shouldn't they have done? As somebody, for example, uh, you know, is uh, living alone, and as he's living alone, maybe he's discouraged. If he had connections, companions, and friends, a wife, a husband, a wife, they would easily relate together. You know, for example, somebody is, uh, you know, of age, and she says, well, I am this uh, old, and I'm not looking for any children now, so why should I think of marriage? Marriage is not just for children. Marriage is for companionship. There are times you might get discouraged and you're all alone by yourself. If you are the companion, if you are somebody you can interact with on an, in an intimate way, it prolongs your life and it makes your life what it ought to be. But such people, they have a problem. They lock up themselves. They're so discouraged. They're not feeling like eating. They're not feeling like doing anything anything uh, another sickness may set in uh, and eventually some people can die unnecessarily you will not die unnecessarily it says bloody and deceitful men uh, shall not live out half their days but i will trust in thee we're looking at proverbs chapter 10 uh, verse 27 proverbs 10 27 the fear of the lord prolongeth days you see when you fear the lord you love the lord and you worship the lord and you allow the lord to direct you in your life your days will be prolonged your life will be prolonged and not just that your life is prolonged it's a happy prolonged life healthy prolonged life useful prolonged life and progressive prolonged life in jesus name but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. The years of the wicked shall be shortened. Some people have this idea that God has fixed a particular day, particular year for them to die. Whether they are righteous or wicked or careful or wise, of foolish God has set a particular time limit and they say what can I do God has determined when they will die some believers righteous people they have that concept and so they say I cannot and I can prolong the time I cannot tell the time God has set the time they must die. Wicked people, sinful people, they say God has set the time. Whether I'm careless or reckless or I do risky things or I do whatever, God has set the time. Not at all. Have you seen what we're reading in the scriptures? It says the years of the wicked shall be shortened. This person is here on earth. And it's not contributing anything. It's injuring other people. It's destroying the plans of God for other people. The years shall be shortened. But your own life, because you fear the Lord, you love the Lord, your life will be prolonged. But I must ask you a question. If God gave you extra 15 years to live, what will you be doing? Will you just say, 15 years, thank you, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Isn't this great? He gave me 15 years more to live. It's not just the 15 years. What will you plan to do? What will you accomplish in that time 
that is given unto you. Let's look at number two here. Number two here, the same stretching of time. If the Lord will stretch your time, prolong your days, and it says, all right, this is where you are now. I want to add one quarter of the life you have lived already. I want to add that unto you. If you, um, you know, calculate the age and it says, I'm giving you one quarter extra. I'm giving you one third extra. How will you use or uh, how will you plan to make sure that the world in which you live benefits from that extra stretching of time? In Genesis chapter 28, I'm reading from verse 15. Behold, I am with thee. I thought you'd say amen. I will keep thee in all the places whither thou goest. The Lord will watch over you. And the Lord will go with you. And will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken of. I've spoken to thee of. It says, all the plans he has for you, all the projects he has before you, all the promises he has for you, and all the projects he wants you to accomplish, he will be with you. He will give you wisdom. He will give you strength. He'll give you the resources and the finance. And then he says, I will not leave you until I have done everything I've said I'm going to do with you. We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 1, reading from verse 9. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 9. Then the Lord put, his, uh, put forth his son and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. What is the word of the Lord now? I said, what is the word of the Lord now? In your mouth. And there is a purpose for that. And that word of God in your mouth will not be in vain. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, see, I have this day said thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build you'll be a builder and to plant you'll be a planter look at verse 19 in verse 19 and they shall fight against thee but they shall not prevail against thee that you have difficulty opposition fighters warriors the people who criticize that doesn't mean that you are not called of God. They shall fight, not because God has sent them, but because that's their nature. And that is their understanding of what they think they must do. But they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee, says the Lord, to deliver thee. The Lord will deliver you. Genesis chapter 20 reading from verse 7 in genesis chapter 20 verse 7 therefore now restore the man his wife for he is a prophet and he shall pray for thee and thou shalt live he shall pray for thee and thou shalt live and if thou restore her not know that know thou that thou shalt surely die and all that are thine. You know the story. It's the story of Abimelech. He had taken Sarah, Abraham's wife. And God said, now, your span, your life, your share of the shortness of time is going to be affected by this action. But if you want to live and live long, do what I say. Restore this man, his wife. Take this action. Compare what is going to happen if you do it with what is going to happen 
if you don't do it, if you want long life, if you want extra time, if you want my forgiveness and freedom, and if you want the prolonging of your days, restore the man, his wife. If you don't, that means all the plans you have, all the vision you have, all the projects you have, everything will be cut short because you will not live long enough to get anything done. So make your sh choice. We have a choice. And if we're listening to the Lord, he'll say, this is what is bringing uh, that havoc, that harm, that premature death, and that sickness. This is what is bringing that. But you have a choice. Get rid of this and do it like this, and your life will be long. And look at verse, verse uh, 17 there. In verse 17, so Abraham prayed uh, unto God, and God healed Abimelech and his wife and his mid servants, and they bear children. They live and they even produce more than if they had just died like that. You know, if Abimelech had said, No, I don't believe that. I don't accept that. I'm not going to accept every dream. That one is false. I'm going to keep the woman. Well, he would have died and people can give many receipts so he died of a heart attack he died of this he died of this he died in his sleep he died mysteriously but god knew why he died and he shouldn't have died and thank god he did what god told him to do he did not die prematurely i'm talking about you you will not die prematurely the Lord will stretch your time in Jesus' name. We read this before. Let's read it again. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 27. The fear of the Lord prolongs days. The fear of the Lord prolongs days. God has called me and God wants me to do this, do that. And I will not do otherwise. Your days will be long on us in Jesus' name. My days my days will be long on the earth in jesus name look at number three number three here the sage sufficiency of time the sage is the wise man and jesus said the queen of sheba came unto solomon because of his wisdom and there is one here greater than solomon wiser than solomon and the lord made use of every minute every moment and every day because he had something he came to do and he finished what the lord what the father had ordained that he will do you will finish look at john chapter 4 verse 34 jesus says unto them my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to do what? And to do what? And to finish his work. John 4, 34. Now, we need to think about the quality of time. Not just the quantity of time. The quality of time. Christ came and for 30 years, he was waiting for his ministry to open up. At the age of 30, he began the ministry. And then he did that ministry for three and a half years. Was that too short? No, for Christ, it wasn't, that, it wasn't short. Because those three and a half years, he did what no other prophet in Israel for thousands of years had ever done. Put all the prophets together of the Old Testament. In those thousands of years, Christ did more than them all. All the knowledge, all the truth that he revealed the gospel. He revealed more truth, saving truth, eternal truth, supernatural truth. Is a redemptive truth. He revealed that more than all that 
the prophets have revealed all that he did the opening of the blind eyes and the deaf ears and the lame walking and the dead rising and the life we live now walking on water and providing food for thousands of people within the three and a half years he did more than all the prophets of the old testament what they had done in fact he brought the new covenant and by the new covenant he brought the old covenant is totally abolished and annulled within the three and a half years he did what no man had ever done the quality of the time he had sufficiency of time to finish everything he came to do the lord will give you wisdom that within the time you have you will finish everything the Lord had ordained you will do in Jesus name look at chapter 17 John chapter 17 verse 4 he was now going to the father and he was uh, now telling the father I have glorified thee on the earth I have finished the work which thou givest me to do he said my time is up and it's all right and there are no regrets i'm not regretting i should have done this i should have done that he said i have finished the work which thou gavest me to do that's the important thing you know, that on the final day of every believer on the final day of every minister you can look back and you are not saying oh i wish i had done that i wish i had gone there i wish i had accomplished that i wish i had learned that i wish i had touched more lives finish to finish the work the father has given you to do that's the work and that is the aim and that is the goal of a wise minister a wise man a wise woman i pray the wisdom of the lord will be granted to you even from today in jesus name look at acts of the apostle chapter 20 verse 24 acts chapter 20 verse 24 but none of these things move me neither count i my life dear unto myself so that i might finish my course of joy so that i might finish my course of joy now in our lives if you're always uh, at least watching at the sky look at the clouds you're not finished if you're doing that, if you're looking at the road, how rough the road is, how steep the mountain is, how difficult people are, how biting uh, the criticisms are, how, how hot the heat of the sun is. If you're watching that and everything matters to you, somebody passes a little comment about you, somebody says something negative about you, something or somebody persecutes you, somebody criticizes you, and all all the time you are you know looking at their faces and all that you are not going to do the work the lord has given you to do but paul the apostle said but none of these things move me they say they do they act they criticize they blackmail the oppress whatever none of these things move me neither count i my life dear unto myself so that i might finish my cause of joy and the ministry which i have received of the lord jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of god the lord give you wisdom and the lord give you courage to be all that god wants you to be and to do all that god has ordained you'll do look at uh, second timothy chapter four we're reading from verse six second timothy chapter 4 verse 6 for i am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand then in verse 7 it says in verse 7 i have fought a good fight he looked at his life from the beginning of his conversion to that time he said yes i fought the beast at ephesus but it's a good fight i fought for the doctrine preservation of the gospel and the doctrines of christ and it's a good fight i have fought a good fight i have finished 
my cause. He knew I have finished my cause. No regrets and no wishing. I wish I'd been wise. I wish I'd evangelized. I wish I'd reached in, you know, those things the Lord was telling me to write to the church at Corinth and the church in Rome and to the church in Philippi and Colossae and Ephesus and to Philemon and to everyone. I wish I'd done that. I wish I'd not wasted time on non-essentials. I wish I'd not been not seen my wounds and not seen my wounds of the persecution of the stoning and of the imprisonment. I, 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 I wish I had done what I should have done. Not at all. No regrets. I pray you will so live your life there will be no regrets in your life in Jesus name. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. You will keep the faith. We are coming to point number three. Point number three we are looking at exponential progress within the shortness of time exponential progress within the shortness of time we're looking at first corinthians chapter 7 verse 29 but this i say brethren the time is short the time is short when we talk of shortness and time, now you understand that what short is relative. Somebody, for example, when we were in school, when you were in school, there was, uh, you know, maybe another student, and that student was always studying, always studying, and he said, bookworm, bookworm. And uh, if they were going to do anything, uh, let's say in a... Um, in a week's time, he has read it all. He has studied it. He has mastered it. And now they go to class. And while the teacher is teaching already, he has mastered those things. And the people, the other members of the class, they're just seeing that for the first time. And so after they have taught them, a day or two after, they want to give them a text, an exam. Remember this, our you know, special student is read it before they taught it. They have taught it. That's the second time for him. The third time he read it over, and now the, an exam is coming. All the other students, uh, they have not read it before, and they are seeing this for the first time. Exam has come, and they give them one hour for the exam. For a man, who has read and read and read, the time is more than sufficient. For the other people who are just cracking their brain, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? For them, the time is too short. What does the lecturer expect of us to do all this within one hour? This time is too short for our man. The time is not short at all. Within 45, 50 minutes, he has finished. And then he submits the paper and he has distinction. The preparation we make in life will either make the time short or too short or sufficient. If you prepare in life, everything you are going to do, everything you want to set your hands on if you prepare by reading if you prepare by studying if you prepare by praying if you prepare by consecration if you prepare by the delight in labor it is not that somebody is pushing you and dragging you with all your heart all your mind you are there and you are for it the time will be sufficient for you I said your time will be sufficient. It's like that every area of life. Good preparation and good purpose in life and then you push yourself and dive into what you need to do. Time will be sufficient for you. Time will be sufficient for me. In Jesus' name. 
Look at Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. We're looking at verse 15. It tells us that we're redeeming the time. See then that she walks circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. And then in verse 16, it says in verse 16, redeeming the time. Buying up the time, making use of your time in a very good way so that your life will be a life of quality and you will never be taken by surprise because you use that time in a qualitative manner and you are prepared and you are purposeful and you propel yourself in what you ought to do, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Three things here we're looking at. Number one, the unprofitableness of erroneous shortage of time. Number two, the usefulness of everyone's share of time. Number three, the uniqueness of essential seasons of time. Number one, we're looking at the unprofitableness of erroneous shortage of time. We're looking at Genesis and I'm looking at the life of Isaac for illustration. Look at Genesis chapter 25 verse 26. After that, after that came his brother, but his hand took hold on Esau's heel and his name was called Jacob. Look at this. And Isaac was three score years old when she bare them. When Esau and Jacob were born, that day, no years, zero, Isaac was 60. Look at chapter 26. We're reading from verse uh, 34. Chapter 26, verse 34, and Esau was 40 years old when he took to wife Judith. Esau was 40 years old when he took to wife Judith. Let me ask you a question. How old was Isaac the father when Esau was 40 years of age? How old? 100. Now, look at verse 35. In verse 35, which were a grip of mine to Isaac and to Rebekah. That's the last verse there. That's the last verse there. Look at the next verse, chapter 27. We're reading from verse 1. That's the very next verse. Remember, the last verse of chapter 26, Isaac was um, 100 years and it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see that he called Esau his eldest son and said unto him my son and he said behold here am I verse 2 in verse 2 it tells us and he said, Behold, now I am old, and I know not the day of my death. I know not the day of my death. He was already thinking of death at this time. Remember, the last time we saw him, he was 100 years. At this time now, knowing that Jacob had not even married, at this time, at that time, Isaac could not be more than 130 years of age. He was 100 in chapter 26, last verse. Now, the next time, when he was thinking, I'm going to die, I'm going to die, he was like maybe about 130 years of age. And, I, and Esau and Jacob, probably about 70 since Jacob had not even married. But now we're looking at chapter, uh, we're looking at chapter 35, and I'm reading from verse 27. And Jacob came to Isaac. Remember, Jacob went away and then spent 20 years outside there and came back. And Isaac was still alive. 
but he thought he was going to die. Therefore, he wasn't planning on doing uh, anything, achieving anything for all those many years because he said, my time of death is near and I don't know when I'm going to die. Even Esau even said, uh, Isaac, my father, will soon die and I will kill Jacob. They were thinking of death and yet death was still far away. I pray God will help you and I to be wise in Jesus' name. And Jacob came unto Isaac, his father, unto Mamre, and unto the city of Abba, which is Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac sojourned. Look at verse 28. In verse 28, and the days of Isaac were, read it out and tell me out loud, one, two, three, go. One, two, three, go. What's a hundred and four score years? One eighty years. Remember long ago, at the age of about one thirty, he said, I don't know when I'm going to die. Therefore, go and get food for me, the one I love, so that I can bless you before I die. From one thirty years of age to one eighty years of age, fifty years. What was Isaac doing? We don't have any record. We were just there. I may die tomorrow. I may die next week. The time of my death is near. And was still alive for another 50 years. That's why we should be wise. I pray every one of us will be wise in Jesus' name. And you know, sometimes a thought can come to you. My time is near. Sometimes you saw me say it. Your time is near. Sometimes uh, Rebecca, the wife, may say it. Your father is about to die. Therefore, go and take this and, you know, do this so that you get them. Everybody is saying he's dying, he's dying, he's dying. And yet, another 40 years, another 50 years, he was still alive. And when you have that time on your hand and everybody is saying you are going to die, you are going to die, and you're not doing anything, and the 50 years... Compared with 180 years, that man could have done something great. You will do something great. Your death is not near. I said the end of your life is not near. And the years that remain, you will do quality work on earth for the world in the kingdom in Jesus' name. You see, because I was expecting a death any time, no expectation, no plans, no goals, no project, no projection, no labor, no learning, no training. He didn't train himself. He didn't train other people to get something done because he said, I may die tomorrow. I may die next week. I may die next month. You will not die until you finish. Live as if life is still there and life is still long and your life will be meaningful and your life will be spent in a qualitative manner in Jesus' name. Maybe I should say it for myself. My life, my life will be spent profitably in Jesus' name. And everybody said, yes. look at number two here. Number two here is the usefulness of everyone's share of time. You have your share. I have my share. And I look at the share of my time. And you look at the share of your time. And you make sure that your share of time is useful profitable and you are moving on exponentially and doing and achieving what you have not even achieved in the past in Jesus name. We're looking at Jeremiah and we're looking at uh, chapter 8 verse 7. Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 7. Yeah. The stalk in the heaven knoweth her appointed times and the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming but my people 
know not the judgment of the Lord. He said, the birds know their time. The creatures by instinct, they know their time. But the people, the people have access to God. The people have access to prayer. The people have access to the promises of God. The people have access to the power of God. They know not their time. And they allow even birds of prey to be clever, to be wiser than they are. I pray we'll make use of time in a profitable way in Jesus' name. Colossians chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 5. Colossians chapter 4, reading from verse 5, it says, Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Understand, the majority of people in the world, well, when it comes to work, they are conscious of time. They want to get there now and they want to close as early as possible. That's what they are conscious of. But outside the closing time, what do they do after that closing time? What do they do in their shortening time? What do they do in the time that is just there for them? Most of them may, you know, sub the, inter sub the social media, internet. They want to do this and do, and those things, they don't contribute anything to their lives, contribute anything to their progress, contribute anything to their spirituality. And if you are surrounded with people like that, they just talk, talk, and talk, and time is gone. And it just play, play, and play, and time is gone. And it just watch uh, non-essential, irrelevant things, and time is gone. That's why it says, redeeming the time, redeeming the time. And if you surround yourself with a company of people that do not know how to make use of their time profitably, you will be like them. And I pray from this day, God will make you wise. You see the people who are killing time, they are slaying time, they are murdering time. And you say, no, the share of time I have, I'm not going to squander it or throw it away. I am going to make use of it in a wise way. Be ready for everything God has appointed for me to do here. and ready for the coming of the Lord. The Lord give you more wisdom in Jesus' name. We're looking at number three. Number three here is the uniqueness of essential seasons of time. The uniqueness of essential seasons of time. We're looking at First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. First Chronicles chapter 12, reading from verse 32. And the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times. Understanding of the times. Understanding of the times. Let me explain to you. Understanding of the times. A hundred years ago, when there was no aeroplane, when there was no computer, when there was no internet, and when there was no social media like we have today, how far could we go in our work in one year? But 50 years ago, a plane now had come, and we could move from here to there. Before, when it was only by ship, by the sea, to go from here to, from Lagos to London, could take you three months by sea. But now, if you're going to use a plane, it will not even take you a day. How can you plan today? Where can you get to, to today? Where can you move to today? The uniqueness of the time in which we live. 
I've said it before. There were times in the past when uh, if you're going to preach to anybody like Paul the Apostle, you have to travel to Iconium. You have to travel to Lystra. You have to go by road or go by sea and you have to go there and see them face to face. But now, because of social media and everything that we have, we don't have to go there, you know, physically. Now we can stay here and get the message and the prayer to them far away. The times in which we live. If you walk like people walk 1,000 years ago, and 2,000 years ago, then you don't know the seasons in which we're living. But now, the uniqueness of essential seasons of time. It says, and the children of Issachar, let's say, for example, today, the scientists, the technologies, and the people that have versatile in social media those are the children of Issachar now which were men that had understanding of the times understanding of the of the gadgets understanding of the technology they have understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do what Israel ought to do and those people can tell us we can transmit the message this way we can multiply the effect of the message this way because they know the understanding of the time and they know what Israel ought to do the heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their command at their command at their com because they knew what others did not know and as we look at our church today and we have understanding of the essential season of our time where we run faster where we'll go farther and we'll climb higher and we'll do more for the kingdom of God in the share of time and season of time that we have now in Jesus' name. And then when those sons or children of Issachar, when they come to direct us and they say, Pastor, this is the way to do it, that's the way to do it, we will well, not say shut up. You are young people and we are overseers and we are leaders and pastors. No, we'll allow them to show us what to do and as they show us what to do, our work will be rewarded by the Lord of the Lord in Jesus' name. Shortness of time, share of time, sufficiency of time. You have time sufficient to do what God has called you to do. And you will do it and the work of God will prosper in your hands in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer that the Lord will give you wisdom that the Lord will help you to know that uh, whatever number of years you have lived, if you trust the Lord and you interpret the Bible very well, you can have a prolonged time and you'll have more time to serve the Lord and serve profitably in Jesus' name. Open your mouth out now and pray. Redeemed. Redeemed. How I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through His infinite mercy. His child and forever I am. Redeemed. I'm so happy in Jesus. No language my rapture can tell. I know that the light of His presence with me does continually dwell. I think of my blessed Redeemer. I think of Him all the day long. I sing, for I cannot be silent. His love is the theme of my song. I know I shall see in his beauty the king in whose love I delight, who lovingly guide my footsteps and give me songs in the night. I know 
there is a crown that is waiting in yonder bright mansion for me. And soon, when the spirit made perfect, at home with the Lord I shall be. Redeemed. Redeemed. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed. Redeemed. His child and forever I am.
Father, we are asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We are asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. Genesis chapter 14. Genesis chapter 14. And it came to pass in the days of Emraphel, king of Shinar, Ariok, king of Elasa, Kedolioma, king of Elam, and Tidal, king of nations, that these made war with Bera, king of Sodom, and with Bersha, king of Gomorrah, Shinab, king of Adma, and Shemeba, king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, which is Zoar. All these were joined together in the vale of Siddim, which is the salt sea. Twelve years they served Kedolioma, and in the thirteenth year they rebelled. And in the fourteenth year came Kedolioma, and the kings that were with him, and smote the Rephaims in Ashtaroth Kanaim, and the Zeusims in Ham, and the Emims in Sheva Kiriathaim, and the Horites in their Mount Seir, unto El Paran, which is by the wilderness. And they returned and came to Enmishpat, which is Kadesh, and smote all the country of the Amalekites, and also the Amorites that dwelt in Hazazan Tamar. And there went out the king of Sodom, and the king of Gomorrah, and the king of Admar, and the king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, the same as Zoar. And they joined battle with them in the vale of Siddim, with Kedolaomer the king of Elam, and with Tidal king of nations, and Amraphel king of Shinar, and Ariak king of Elasa, four kings with five. And the vale of Siddim was full of slime pits, and the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled, and fell there, and they that remained fled to the mountain. And they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah, and all their victuals, and went their way. And they took Lot, Abram's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom, and his goods, and departed. And there came one that had escaped, and told Abram the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre the Amorite, brother of Eshcol, and brother of Ana, and these were confederate with Abram. And when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. And he divided himself against them, he and his servants by night, and smote them, and pursued them unto Hobah, which is on the left hand of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods, and also brought again his brother Lot and his goods, and the women also, and the people. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Kedolaoma and of the kings that were with him at the valley of Shavi, which is the king's dale. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And he gave him tithes of all. And the king of Sodom said unto Abram, Give me the persons, and take the goods to thyself. And Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lift up mine hand unto the Lord, the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a thread even to a shoe latchet, and that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shouldest say, I have made Abram rich. Save only that which the young men have eaten, and the portion of the men which went with me, Ana, Eshcol, and Mamre. Let them take their portion. Chapter 15. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless, 
and the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven, and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take me an heifer of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all these, and divided them in the midst, and laid each piece one against another, but the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, an horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. And it came to pass that when the sun went down, and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. In the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land, from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates, the Kenites, and the Kenizzites, and the Cadmonites, and the Hittites, and the Perizzites, and the Rephaims, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Girgashites, and the Jebusites. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim. Pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray.